first story. OP's family likes to take his seat whenever he gets up. He gets fed up and brings his own chair to gatherings. Bill does not take to this very well and ends up going full Hulk. Okay, hear me out. For as long as I can remember in my family, almost any time I got up from my seat, someone would take it to either be funny or to claim it as if no one was using it. And as a teenager, it literally got to the point where I bought my own folding chair so I could pick it up and carry it with me. If I left it where it was, someone would take it. Then I got mad when wanted it back. As an example, on a holiday last year, I got up from my chair for a moment to help with something and came back to find a kid in it. And then the family berated me for wanting them to move. But I tell them that when a man owns and brings his own chair, they expect to be able to use it. I own a very nice folding chair that's comfortable and easily portable. And I pretty much bring it to any family event because people are always scrambling for chairs. Well, the other day I went to a birthday party for my nephew. And like always, I brought my own chair. But at some point, I had to use the bathroom. When I came back, my chair was gone. And everyone acted like they didn't know where it was. I said they had one minute to return it, or I was leaving. They laughed at first, but then realized I was serious as I started going for the door. Everybody told me to just calm down, and it was just a joke. I said I don't care if they think I'm a stick in the mud. I wouldn't be bringing my own chair all the time if other people weren't always taking my seat when I got up. I don't think it's funny. I never did. My brother-in-law then pulled the chair out of where he'd hidden it, and when I got it back, one of the legs was bent. I said it was not like this before, and how could he possibly have done this to a metal chair? He said he could fix it and tried to undo it, but only made it worse. The chair is pretty much unusable now because the leg is warped, and I don't want to risk putting weight on it. I told my brother-in-law he owes me $50 for the chair because that's what I paid for it two years ago. He got mad and kept saying it was just a stupid chair. I said it was my stupid chair, and this wouldn't have happened if he wasn't so immature that he and everyone else had to mess with me for years about where I sit. Then I took my now messed up chair and walked out. My family has been blowing my phone up, saying that it's just a chair and to let it go. But I still want my bill to pay me back for it. Ada, update. Last night, I sent a mass text out to my family saying that I will not be going to any family function, no matter how important it is, until they make this right by promising not to screw with me anymore and repaying me for the chair. They've mostly gone quiet now. But I can wait. I've got all the time in the world for them to realize I'm serious. Update. I walked out over a chair, and my family tore itself apart. I wasn't going to come back here again. To be honest, I'd completely forgotten I made this account. I only got back in because I'd written down the password and left it on my desk. I was listening to Reddit videos on YouTube a couple weeks ago when I suddenly heard my old Ada post. So I thought I'd give an update. Well things escalated a lot after I made that post because I linked it to my parents and other family members after a little while. They were furious with me at first. Some even mocked me, saying things like, Oh, watch what you say or do around OP. He might just post about it on Reddit. But when they actually read the comments on my post when I made them, they became mortified. My bill did agree to pay for a new chair and gave me the money I asked for. I bought a better folding chair than my last one and resumed going to family functions. But whenever I was there, there was this air about some of the family members. They looked at me like I'd sucked all the fun out of the room. My parents had stopped thinking the chair thing was funny and even scolded a kid for taking my seat when I got up to use the bathroom. The only problem is that this kid was my nephew and he started crying when they made him get up. My bill came to the boy's rescue, and my nephew ended up blurting out that his daddy told him he could do it. When I was out of the bathroom, there was a big fight about it going on. Several family members, including my sister and Bill, were all yelling that it was just a damn chair, and I shouldn't be so but third about it. My parents demanded to know why they were so upset about not being allowed to screw with me anymore. Like, what was their motivation after doing it for so long? It made no sense, and it wasn't funny anymore? And that's when I intervened. I told them none of this crap would have ever happened if they hadn't been so intent on messing with me when there really was no point to it. And I only started bringing my own chair because I could never find a stable place to sit. And if they still thought they were in the right about the situation, then they were just bullies, plain and simple. And what kind of example is that to be setting for their son? My bill raged, grabbed my new chair, and hurled it through the bay window in the living room. There was a bit of a pause before he realized what he'd just done. Then he took off in his car and left my sister and nephew there. My parents got my sister to call him, and over the phone, they threatened to go to the police if he didn't pay for the damages. Bill yelled a few F-bombs until my sister took the phone back, and she said that he can either make things right 
or she'll divorce him. Well, that did the trick because he came back looking like a kicked puppy with his head hanging low. He apologized to me and my parents without even looking at us, said he'd pay for the new bay window, and left again. My sister said he drank himself to sleep that night. My new chair was just fine. It took being hurled through a bay window like a champ. There was hardly a scratch on it. My brother hired a window company to come and replace the window. And they had to measure it and order a new one before it could be installed. And until then, the window had to be covered with plywood. It took some time, but they got the new bay window. And it's better than the old one, though I imagine that it was extra expensive because it's a bay window. The family was still divided about the situation for a while. Mainly Bill's parents, my uncle, and a couple cousins. They blamed me and called me obnoxious for insisting on bringing my own chair and refusing to let anyone else use it. So I compromised. I said that if I had a good designated seat that no one would try to take away, I'd leave my chair in my car. It took two more family barbecues before they finally agreed to this. Since then, I've left the chair in my car unless there really wasn't enough seating, and that's only happened once since. The problem is though, that even though they stopped screwing with me, they were still screwing with each other until things went too far. They still like to take each other's seats. But I guess others were following my example because they put their feet down and demanded it stop. It's been going on for decades, and they've had enough. Bill stayed out of the fight entirely and hasn't caused any more trouble. But for several family functions, a number of people didn't bother to show up. My mother was broken up about it because she loves hosting parties. It took months, but everything more or less normalized again. But without the chair thing going on, some have resorted to other stupid pranks. Like a little device you hook to a chair that makes farts. They didn't do this to my seat, but they did it to a cousin. And said cousin got really petty at the next party and let out real farts. He said he ate a whole pack of fiber bars and had eggs for breakfast. And it was damn nasty. Other pranks included. Hiding eating utensils, a stink bomb, hiding some sort of monster thing in the toilet, cellophane in a doorway, ripping paper when somebody bends over, messing with drinks, hiding shoes, copying outfits, a container of foam packing peanuts above a doorway, and finally the one that really infuriated my aunt and uncle when a party was held at their house. A glitter bomb. They got the carpet professionally cleaned and billed the person who made the glitter bomb for it. So now the pranks are just over. They don't want any more. I'm fine with that. But the last few family functions have been a bit dull. I think they were so used to how things were that now they're trying to find other ways to amuse themselves that don't involve cell phones. Update. My chair was stolen. A brat broke my phone. And a chair prank caused a very messy divorce in the family. Somehow, I return again. And with some crazy information on some stuff that went down this past year, I never could have imagined how things could have spiraled into what happened. If you guys thought my brother-in-law throwing my chair through a bay window after his son wasn't allowed to sit on it was crazy, just read about all of this. You're not going to want to believe it. Firstly, my good padded folding chair, which I'd paid over $80 for, was stolen. I have no idea by whom it happened, as it didn't happen at a family event, but rather hanging out at a friend's house. Somebody just walked into his yard and took it. I learned my lesson and decided never to buy an expensive folding chair again. Now I just keep a cheap folding chair I got for $3 at a second-hand store in my trunk. Moving on to other stuff. The family pranks I described in my last post seemingly stopped, but some of them slowly resumed. However, they were only harmless little things that just gave chuckles. The only person that they refused to prank at all was me, due to the events of my previous posts. But that didn't stop entitlement. The seven-year-old son of one of my cousins stole my phone during a family birthday party at my parents' house and intentionally broke it rather than return it. His parents were already going through a rough patch. My cousin's father was constantly clashing with his wife over how to parent their child. His now ex-wife was a bad enabler for their son. She's also terrible with money and has a very her way or highway attitude, and she does not like to back down when wrong. She was one of the more outspoken people who hated me for bringing my own chair and never sharing it but she never got physical about it. She once confronted me and said that if I was going to bring my own chair, it should be something nice and made of wood that doesn't fold. I told her I was not going to lug around a dining room chair wherever I go when a folding chair takes up only a little space in my trunk. She argued with me about it more and got nowhere. None of the family events were at her house, and she does not dictate my life. She gave me death glares for months, but otherwise left me alone. The night her son stole my phone, He'd already been grounded from electronics by his father. The kid took my phone when I set it down on a table to eat some cake, and then ran off with it when I wasn't looking. He holed himself up in the master bedroom closet, and was trying to install new gaming apps on my phone. 
That closet had a lock on the door, and the key was lost years ago. The brat refused to come out or return the phone. His mother kept telling us all mainly me to just leave him alone and let him play on it. But I refused and said my phone was not his toy. The brat was told several times to open the door, and he refused. All the while, his mother kept contradicting everything she said. My cousin got fed up and started forcing the old door open. It's an old manufactured home, and that door was pretty flimsy. Just as he was making headway, we heard loud banging sounds from inside the closet. The brat had started banging my phone against the nearest hard object he could find. The brat let out some loud screams as his dad pulled him out of the closet. The screen on my phone was nearly destroyed. Thankfully, the rest of it was protected by the case. My cousin's wife tried to blame it on me and said it was my fault her baby broke the phone because I wouldn't let him play on it. Everyone in the room turned on her, and she shut up out of cowardice. It cost around $300 to repair my phone, and I had to use a temporary one until mine was fixed. And yes, my cousin paid for the repairs. Well, the rest of the family knew about my cousin's wife's disdain for folding chairs like the one I keep in my car. And they decided to pull a prank on her because of her attitude after the incident with her son stealing my phone. I would like to be clear that I was not involved in this in any way, nor did I really condone doing it. But the entire thing was out of my hands. My cousins got together, decided to prank that bee of a wife, and got their hands on a whole bunch of folding chairs. Then they removed every chair and seat in his house, and replaced them with the folding chairs. Folding chairs at the dining table. Folding chairs at the counter. Folding chairs in place of the living room furniture. And more were strategically placed around the house. Even the chairs on the porch were replaced with them. When my cousin's wife came home, her reaction went far beyond what anyone thought. Their plan was to just record her having a tantrum and get a laugh. But she ended up going insane on the spot and trying to get a knife from the kitchen to attack her husband with. When she couldn't get the knife, she pulled out pepper spray from her purse and used it on everybody. Then she attacked her husband with her long, fake nails. She probably would have tried to claw his eyes out or something. But thankfully, one of the other guys there kicked her off. I couldn't freaking believe this SHT happened all because of folding chairs. And I feel like the root cause since I'm the one who was always bringing my own chair to family events since there was never enough seating and people kept taking the places I was sitting. And it escalated far beyond me. Police were obviously called, the wife got arrested. All the guys there had to go to the hospital because of the pepper spray in their eyes and my cousin had to get all the scratches on his face treated. He looked like a bobcat had attacked him. He filed for an immediate order of protection against his wife. They'd recorded everything, like her trying to get the knife and screaming that she'd stab somebody. She had to go stay with her sister after spending some time in jail, and her sister I hear, is as narcissistic as she is. My cousin obviously filed for divorce, and his wife later spent some more time in jail after pleading guilty for the assault. She wasn't allowed near her son for a while, and she tried to take it out on my cousin in court during the divorce. That did not go in her favor because he was easily able to prove how unhinged she is. My cousin got primary custody of his son, and his ex got only supervised visitation since she was so mentally unstable. She's pretty much abandoned her son, and has shacked up with some fat older man, gotten a serious tan, and bleached her hair. I guess she'd rather live the life of a sugar baby caked in makeup. My cousin's son has shown great improvement since being separated from his mother. He was put through counseling, and he listens to his father more now. The kid has to be babysat a lot since my cousin has to work. But at the very least, things got better. I still feel like the root cause of this is the chair thing though. Edit. Just a bit of added information I didn't think to include before. But my cousin's ex-wife had a love for fancy, expensive things she couldn't really afford. She filled my cousin's house with imitation Victorian-style furniture that she was extremely anal about. Which I suppose was one of the reasons she lost her mind so hard when it was all replaced with folding chairs. My cousin threw all that furniture out when he divorced her. He said it was all uncomfortable and looked better than it felt. Second edit. My dumb self didn't bother to set a password on that phone when I got it. So the kid was able to use it just fine when he took it. I set a password after getting the phone fixed. And the kid was grounded from electronic devices by his father for a month. Second story. OP asks if she is the A for keeping her daughter away from the father for six years. I have a wonderful six-year-old daughter. I was married to the love of my life for three years, but we separated not divorced and went to NC. I discovered I was pregnant two months after moving to a different part of the country to live with my parents. As Indians, we hold deep respect for elders. It's a cultural norm to live with and care for our parents until their passing. 
I want to share the background of my marriage and relationship. My husband, his sisters, and his mother faced a difficult upbringing. His father passed away when he was nine, causing trauma and a sudden loss of livelihood. Working tirelessly, my mother-in-law supported and fed them, eventually raising my husband, who started a business, and actually turning their lives around. He put them out of poverty. As far as my mill is concerned, I look up to her a lot. She legitimately worked as domestic help in various houses to make ends meet. She raised her babies like a superwoman. I admire her a lot. She put my husband through college too. Due to the trauma in their lives, Mill and husband had what I term emotional incest, mainly from Mill. The husband deeply loves Mill and is willing to do anything for her due to her significant sacrifices during his formative years. 1. Due to Mill struggling with closeness between my then-boyfriend and me, she would frequently experience panic attacks. My husband, prioritizing his mother, decided to break up with me, leaving me heartbroken. 2. After a few months, my ex fell into depression. Mill personally asked me to marry her son, and he apologized as well. All was well. 3. She insisted on a prenup, uncommon in my society, and typically associated with celebrities and tycoons. I was offended. I wouldn't have sought alimony. In India, prenups suggest a marriage with a weak foundation and mistrust, as marriages rarely end here. Please don't preach about its benefits. 4. She'd be offended if I cooked for my husband or took him for a romantic weekend. 5. Lastly, the most offensive thing was her interference in my fertility treatments. I had PCOS, and she arranged massages and treatments that made me uncomfortable. These issues led to frequent fights between my husband and me. He was spineless and couldn't even make decisions for himself. Eventually, I decided to permanently leave their house. Both my husband and Mill attributed it to my ego, never looking back. Mill is not a bad person. She is traumatized and heavily reliant on her son. She was never mean to me. She encouraged my career, and I admired her for her family efforts. When my daughter was born six months old, I set aside my ego, anger, hurt, and betrayal to visit their house. I vividly recall a watchguard calling inside Mill about my arrival, but I was denied permission to enter. Mill's message was, Once you decide to leave, do not come back. I was heartbroken once more. I wished for us to be a family for our daughter's sake. I taught my daughter that her father is a good brother, son and person, but he wasn't good to me. Consequently, my daughter showed no interest in knowing her father believing. If he wasn't good to you mom, then he cannot be good to me. Mill's rejection shattered me, and I vowed to be a single mother to my daughter, who is the light of my life. Recently, my husband discovered through my old colleague's social media that I have a daughter and intends to confront me. Update. Three days later, when I posted this, this incident happened two weeks ago. Just two days prior, this happened. My ex confronted me that day. We were in my office. He apparently went to my daughter's performing arts class and told her he was her father. This distressed her, and she hasn't been engaging with us at all and wants to stay in her room. I am furious with my ex. Not because he didn't consult with me, but because he told her in such a manner that our daughter ran away from him in shock and nearly unalived herself while running on the road. She fell down and injured herself. No matter our bitterness, I do not want this to negatively impact my daughter and her mental health. My husband didn't believe me when I told him I had arrived at his home that day. He accused me of lying to him. I still carry the boarding pass from that day as a reminder of how I was turned away from the house that was once mine, like a street beggar. And I gave those to him. My husband called his mother to confirm the story, asking if she turned me away that day six years ago. She admitted to that. I could hear his sister chastising Mill, saying that she had no right to do that. She hoped that we as a couple could have repaired our relationship. Mill said that her son was broken after I left him. She felt that me suddenly turning up again in their lives would bring another storm, and she was just protecting her son. Apparently the watchguard didn't tell her that I was here with a baby. Otherwise, she would have let me in. My husband told her that I was carrying his daughter with me. Upon learning this, she started crying on the phone, saying she regretted turning her granddaughter away. I am a daughter too. I know the role my dad plays in my life. I wanted my daughter to know her father, as it is her right, and I wanted him to know his daughter too. I broke down and cried. I told my husband that he never understood me before and can't understand me now. Even after the supposed death of our relationship, I still have to prove myself to him. He can't take my word as it is. I told him that what we have to do moving forward should be in the best interest of our daughter. We need to let her accept this first. He held me as we both cried. 
I do not want her to lose her childhood, the way my husband did when he was under 10. She is very young, and we have to do whatever it takes to give her a stable life. I have no idea how to co-parent her with her ex. He is furious with his mother, and told her that she manipulated him, whether it was out of ignorance or trauma. She kept him from someone who could give his life a purpose his daughter. He is moved and emotional. He decided not to take me to court, as this was a deeply personal matter. We have decided to settle this among ourselves. Relevant comments. 1. I never badmouthed my ex to my daughter. I loved him and still do. I told him he was a good person, but he wasn't a good husband. I think you are misunderstanding. I treat my daughter like a little adult and ask her if she ever feels like wanting to know her father. I would let her. I left it up to her. It was her choice. I edited out the part about my parents. My parents did not push me to keep her away. They respected my decisions. Sorry for not conveying that appropriately. 2. I think giving her a choice and treating her like an adult is my conscious choice. Her father never did anything to put boundaries between Mill and our marriage and was spineless. He could not make decisions for himself and our family without Mill butting in. He could not even move out to a different apartment. His being in the picture means Mill will be deeply enmeshed with our daughter as well as with him. It wasn't easy for me. I wanted him back. I loved him and still do. I wanted him to grow and improve. But he wouldn't. Eventually, I feared that my daughter would become like her grandma and her father. I wanted her to be as independent as I am today. I want her to make decisions for herself, and I have done this from the very beginning. I know her grandma would love her a lot, but she loved her son too. What did that do? It broke his family, his wife left him, and he has a daughter he did not know for years. 3. Sorry for not clarifying this in my post. When I visited their house, I was outside, standing near the gate. The watchguard was new and did not know me, and he called inside their house. Apparently, Mill picked up the phone, and the guard told her that I had come. She relayed a message to me. Once you have broken every ties with us, please do not bother coming back. I was denied permission to enter. I did not speak directly to Mill on the phone. The guard did it. I do not badmouth my husband. I tell her every day how wonderful, giving, and kind her father is. I tell her that sometimes adults have problems, and they separate. Adults commit mistakes. I did too maybe my self-respect was too damaging for the sake of keeping families together. I tell her that mom and papa are not good for each other. She does not want to meet her father, even though I gave her the choice. 4. I truly feared what would become of that dynamic. I set my fears aside when I boldly went up to their house to pay them a visit. I thought that having a baby would change things. When I was denied entry again, a fear rooted in my mind that day. Just as my husband could never prioritize his wife over his mother, because she was jealous of our closeness, he would never be able to put our daughter first too. Thank you for watching the video. If you are interested in listening to these kinds of stories, we've got more in store for you. Simply subscribe to our channel, hit the like button, and share it with your friends.